Yo, if you're looking for a party tonight, the Mecca is where it's at. And man, is this place heating up. This is how we do it. It's Friday night. There's only four teams left battling for the Big East crown. First, it's the Friars, who don't stop balling to the end. Cartwright, the spin. Oh! But it's the X-Men, who know how to bring down the house. So let's see who's got that fresh swag to go all the way. It's time to blow the roof off this garden. The Big East Tournament semifinals starts now on FS1. This is how we do the semifinals of the Big East Tournament, the Ford FS1. College Hoops tip-off, sponsored by Ford, going further so you can. Big East Coach of the Year, Chris Mack, in his fifth straight Big East Tournament semifinal. Is this the year they finally win it all? Optimism high for the one seed, courtesy of Trayvon Blewett and his three straight 20-point games. But up next for the Musketeers, Kyron Cartwright and a tricky 20 win side from Providence. Semi-final Friday is here. Villanova Butler in our nightcap, but we begin with a 1v5 matchup from the floor of Madison Square Garden. Bill, you're with us. Player introductions going on behind us. Rob Stone, Tony Marshall, Kevin Willard, the head coach of Seton Hall, joining us. Usually, you're not free on this Friday night. You played in the last three semifinals, but nothing, nothing better to do this Friday night. No, I had a little trouble with the buzzer last last night. So <laughs> glad to be here with you guys. By the way, the refs are loving you oh, here tonight. They, they always love you when you're on we're on this side. Once once you get on the sideline, it's a whole different story. Let's take a look at our updated Big East bracket. Only four remain. Xavier Nova. We all expected them to be here. A couple surprises though. Providence coming up next and then Butler in our nightcap championship game tomorrow night 630 Eastern over on Fox. Coach let's start with you. Xavier is heavily favored in this one. If you're Ed Cooley in Providence what has to be the focus tonight? You have to find a way to stop Xavier's three big guys. You cannot let Xavier dominate you inside. Chris Mack does good as any job in the country of getting the basketball inside. Xavier has to find a solution to that. Yeah, and, and they really have been, I think, the best team in the country the last three weeks or so. They're, they've won 13 of their last 14. This is a team since realignment has been in the semifinals every year. But on the other side, you have a, a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in Eddie Cooley's Providence Friars. Which team will show up, I think, in my opinion, is scarier coach than a team that you know shoots lights out. No question. I think tonight Ed Cooley needs Jalen Lindsay to show up, and he needs to show up in a big time way. If he can make threes, open up the court for Kyron Cartwright, Providence has a good shot. Providence, the only team in the nation to defeat both Xavier and Villanova this season. Again, Villanova coming up a little bit later tonight. But first up, Xavier, you believe Xavier's a number one seed in the tournament right now? I do. I think Xavier's as good as any team in the country. And they have been as good as any team in the country for how long now? One of the most complete teams in America all season long. Last couple of weeks, you think they're number one in the nation. They've won 13 of the last 14. Three of us will see you next at halftime if the refs don't get to Kevin Willard. For the call, Gus Johnson, Jim Jackson. All right, thank you very much, Stoner. We are ready for semifinal action at the world's most famous arena. Hi, everybody. Gus Johnson, along with former Ohio State Player of the Year and All-America Jimmy Jackson. Semifinal, Big East Tournament. These two teams familiar with each other, each winning a game at home against each other. This should be a very interesting matchup because when you look at Providence, when you look at Xavier, they've got some really tall, long guys. And big guys, so it's not going to be a surprise. Both teams know each other, like Coach Willard said. Xavier's going to try to pound the ball, but also Temple, 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 push after, makes and misses, misses. And look for Providence, I think, after the game, the Alpha Diallo and also Rodney Bullock had to go one-on-one -on -one in the post and cause some havoc on the defensive, on the offensive end. All right, let's join the third member of our team on the sideline, Lisa Byington. Well, when eight days ago, when Xavier beat Providence Ed Cooley said I'd like be excited to get to play them again now those were words meant to motivate his team Chris Mack has used them as another example in what he told me in his words why people think our team is the most overrated number one seed in the country now the two head coaches are friends they exchange friendly texts about it they joked about it 
but they certainly have used it as part of the buildup tonight, Yes. All right, Lisa, thank you very much. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for the Musketeers and the Friars for Providence. I tell you what, Cartwright with a wonderful move last night to win it for Providence and for Xavier. Keep your eye on Quinton Gooden. He scares this Providence team, especially when he's shooting it well. And your officials for this evening's game, John Gaffney, Jeffrey Anderson, and Ed Corbett. Providence and Xavier split their two meetings this year. The Friars won 81-72 at the dunk in January. Isaiah Jackson scored 18 off the bench. Xavier got revenge with an 84-74 win at Centos. Trayvon blew it with 23. Here we go. Cartwright, the runner. In and out. And the rebound to blew it. What should we pay attention to early on in this game, Jimmy? Well, a lot of movement for Xavier. Of course, they want to get some isolations in the post. See if Cancer can go to work. You draw the defense in, and then you can kick open to open three-point shots. And Providence right there want to get the ball to the basket like Kyle did on last play. Najee Marshall with the underneath layup, and Xavier is on the board. Najee Marshall adds so much to the Xavier team. He's long, he's athletic, he's a playmaker, he plays under control. And that's saying a lot for a young fellow. Najee Marshall, freshman from Atlantic City, also spent some time in the DMV. Meanwhile, Bullock, who's really starting to come into his own, hits his first shot. It's all about confidence. You see the ball go in early. Now you feel good about yourself. And I talked about coming off that game last night. He was exciting. He was energetic. But more importantly, Gus, as we saw in that last shot, he was ultra aggressive. Bullock with 13 against Great. Top of the arc, Trayvon Blewett. Loose ball, batted around, knocked out of bounds, and it's Providence basketball. Chris Mack, he's a winner, 48 years old, named Big East Coach of the Year this week after recording his fifth straight 20-win season and his first Big East regular season title. Diallo coming off a nice game against Creek. 13 to shoot. Lindsey D off the heel, loose ball, and a five coming up on Bullock. And an excellent job on the pick and roll that time by stretching Cartwright out. That pulled Lindsey a little bit deeper, and actually they had a pass inside, but because they were long, and you, you took away the passing lanes from Cartwright, he couldn't get the ball inside to Cleve yeah. Young. When you play guys that were tall and long, and you're a big man yourself, what was the key to getting your, your shots off? Creating space. You got to be able to create enough space, whether you're posting up or getting a jump shot. So now that length doesn't bother you on a contest. Cantor backing his way in, draws a double team, got it away, and hits. He is tricky down there. He's like an old school YMCA ball player. Slow movement, methodical, but he uses his body really well. And that time Rodney Bullock came down, but he didn't commit. So he's able to split that double team a little bit and score inside. Cantor, the younger brother of Ennis Cantor, who plays here with the New York Knicks. He's in Milwaukee today as they get ready to play the Bucks. Deep J, Cartwright, no. Marshall kicks it out. Blew it. On the baseline. Lindsey guarding it. That's one of those longer defenders that's going to try to cause some problems for Blue. Here's Cantor, left hand, no. Bullock with a board. Well, both Young and Lindsey solid in their defensive effort. They stay disciplined on that possession. <laughs> Meanwhile, Bullock hits a deep three, and he's off to a terrific start. He has all five points for Providence. Yeah, such a tough guard, especially when he gets his jump shot going. Look for Bullock now to incorporate a little pump fake and then put it on the deck and attack. Blew it deep jump. Pure. He knows how to get that thing off. Second leading score in the history of Xavier. Well, you saw right there, you're talking about creating space, how you get your shot. A little step back right there. Forced Lindsey into the lane. I mean, below the three-point line. Now he's able to get a shot up. Lewitt coming off a 27-point game last night. Bullock again. And another rebound for Najee Marshall, the freshman. Here's Marshall, great athlete, and he carried the ball on the baseline. Now he tucked down, double team, methodic, YMC game, so what? Take a little contact, left hand, soft touch inside, and Bullock deep range got there just a little late by Najee Marshall. He used his brother 
Ennis's locker yesterday in the Knicks locker room at MSG. Cantor part of that Carmelo Anthony trade coming from Oklahoma City to New York. And he's hoping that they win this game because he's never been a had a chance to see his brother play in person in college. And he will tomorrow if they advance. Here's good in transition. He's great down here. The teardrop off the front rim and in. This kid keeps getting better and better. He was forced into the starting lineup as a freshman. Made the adjustment, and now he is a big part of what Chris Mack wants to do. So much confidence gained from that elite eight run. He made some plays down the stretch. But I tell you what, when he's coming at you full speed, you see a foul right here. Cartwright is going to pick him up early. 15.40 to go. First half, 9-5 Xavier. Well, just surveying the area, using that supreme athleticism, and then stops on the dime for a nice little runner inside. New York City, the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, 9-5. Xavier on top of Providence here in the semis. Now, Providence and Xavier met twice this season, January 6th. Kyron Cartwright and Rodney Bullock led the Friars to an upset win over the fifth-ranked Musketeers. February 28th, though, Xavier beat Providence 84-74, clinching at least a share of its first-ever Big East regular season championship. Xavier is ranked a school record best third in the latest AP poll and has won four straight 13 of 14. Playing their best basketball at the end of the year so versatile with their lineups. They're long, they're athletic, they can fend multiple playmakers and more importantly they play with a chip on their shoulder knowing that they had a lot to prove. Diallo quick release. That ball deflected by Makura as it went as it left his hands. Providence starts this game two for eight from the field. Nate Watson is checked in for PC. He's a big guy, 6'10 freshman, number zero. He's guarding O'Mara. Good off the bounce to the cup. The runner, air ball, snatched out of the air by Watson. And great defense that time by Cartwright. Cartwright baseline, the elbow goes up, and McClure got a hand on it again. Meanwhile, Lindsey on the fade. PC getting shots. Now McCure cut off on the baseline by Lindsey. Good and top of the key, 20 footer. McCure with the rebound, can't stick it back. And that's the part of the game right there for Quentin Good. He, if he can get that down, Gus, where he's really knocking that long ball with consistency, is going to open up everything else in his game. Watson with the jump hook on the baseline with the left hand. How about that? Nowhere really to operate in a soft touch. Three games ago against Xavier, he had six points, three blocks, and two rebounds. He's a big guy. 6'10 out of Arlington, Virginia. Boy, this is his feel right here. He gives himself enough room on the baseline to turn and now score. And talking to Coach Cooley, he calls him two points waiting to happen. And the more comfortable he gets at playing at this level, the more he continues to work on his game, you're going to see much more of that kind of productivity. 9-7 Xavier. Lewis working hard off the ball. Quick release three. Strong. Marshall keeps it alive. Can't hold on. And a foul coming up against Providence. And that's the first foul on Diallo. And that's contributing in a different way for Najee Marshall. He does all the little things. That time he came from the opposite side to be able to get that rebound and keep the possession alive for Xavier. Kaiser Gates checks in now. He's coming off that 16-point performance yesterday against St. John's. Musketeers beating the Red Storm 88-60 in the quarterfinals. He turned a four-point halftime lead into a 28-point blowout. Also scrubs in with the ball right now for the X-Men. Lewis baseline, Scruggs sets his feet and hits. A beautiful play that time in the back line for Providence got lost when Strug went to the corner in the quick decision that time by Trayvon Blewett to hit him in rhythm to be able to knock down that shot. Scruggs, freshman from Indianapolis. Yala, eight to shoot. 
Lindsey, four to shoot. Stripped by Gates, stolen by Gates. He'll leave it for Blue. Good takes a three. And now Ed Cooley wants to slow things down. Malik White at the point. And a couple times yesterday, guys, this Providence team got stuck on one side of the court and played to the hands of the defense. They're at their best when they can move the ball. And good runs White to the basket and jams it down. That's a good old-fashioned New York pick block. Yeah, but you, he's sneaky quick with his hands and Luke White can't play with the ball out front, be assertive and try to get by, but not with good show. 14 to 7, 10, 2 run. For Xavier. Watson again inside, across the lane this time. Goes up no. Lewis, great legs tonight. Takes a three. In and out. Tight rims at the guard. They're usually loose. I like them, that's right. They were a little loose. Lindsay baseline, Jay. Got it. That was loose. But and that's another way that this Providence team, again, they won the game yesterday shooting 36%. But if they can get out of transition, that secondary break, spread it out, get some shots, now you take away the length of this Xavier defense. Romero wants some space. Backs up on Watson across the lane and good for the big man. Big Sean with his first bucket of the game. Yeah, a lot of beef down there, but again, he uses big shoulder and wide body and lower body to get create space to get to that left hand hook inside. Watson gets it back out and a steal. Scruggs hustling, gets to the hole and flushes it. And a timeout called by Ed Cooley and the Friars. Xavier coming out, playing with incredible energy and hustle. A little Jay-Z, excuse me, miss, let me take that. I'm going to get to the other end, show off some of my athleticism. Slam dunk for Quentin Gooden, and then being more active, the freshman, Scruggs wants to get involved. Not just you, young fella. I'm contributing in many different ways. 11.48 to play first half. Xavier up by eight. The winner of this game heads to the Big East Tournament Championship. Score, eight-point lead for the Musketeers over the Providence Fires in the huddle, sponsored by the LG V30. We got two kills. The only good, only good look they've gotten is Lindsay in transition. I know you were back. You were looking for like long guys to the rim, but you got to filter out. We got to, first thing's basket. Second thing is identifying shooters. Obviously, the ball's got to get stopped. Hey, Sean and Karen are doing a great job of building walls in transition because they're big flag back. It's like we got five versus four in transition, then we get matched up. Uh, coaches always talk about protect the paint first, especially with a team that's not known for knocking down three-point shots. But he also, this match, want, wants his team to be aware when they spread out a little bit, make sure you're at arm's distance. And when that pass comes up, you're right in their shooting pocket and taking away a deep three. Let's go to Lisa Byington. Ed Cooley reminding his team not to be overwhelmed by this moment. He said, guys, we have plenty of time to come back. We have to get rid of the energy plays, and that means the turnovers leading to uncontested dunks and layups. But very, very encouraging huddle on the Providence side, guys. Here's Bakira curling to the basket, hangs in the air, won't get the roll. Tyreek Jones with the board, and he can't finish. Marshall plucks it. Right now, Xavier dominating in the paint. 12 nothing. Points in the paint. Jones across the lane, almost traveled, picked up by Bullock. And that time Jones has to feel that the double team is there, the pressure is there. Make a move and then make a quick decision and kick it out. Somebody's going to be open. Bullock with a pump fake, pulls up from 16, off the heel. Kaiser Gates with the rebound. And Kaiser, great defense that time. Showing a little versatility, not just as an offensive player, but having an impact. That's on the defensive end on that possession. Gates, three, rims out. Kyron Cartwright with the rebound. Isaiah Jackson, very aggressive rebounder. Nothing coming easy right now for PC. Edwards. 
Four to shoot for Jackson. He'll take a jumper. And the easy rebound to Najee Marshall. I tell you, when I watch Xavier, Jimmy, tell me if I'm wrong about this. I feel like I'm watching the college version of the San Antonio Spurs. Well, how they play. I, I tell you what, they're disciplined on defense. You watch, it may be some openings to drive the lane, but then the gap closes because they play such great half-court defense. Akira, seven to shoot, scrubs, looks for Jones, and an offensive foul on Watson, just whack Jones. Sends him to the floor, that's a good one. Hard, no foul. Wow. I mean, came across. Jones pushes off. That's a lot of body, but it's a clean play. It's just, that's, just, that's just two big bodies going up, and one getting better, the better of the other one, guys. Tell you what, I saw a matchup yesterday. Weidman and Delgado. You would have thought it was a WWE. You, I, was, I was impressed with the officials. In the earlier game, too, allowed the physical contact, kind of let the guys play the game. And now you have to make adjustments to that. And I thought both teams did an excellent job of playing physical without getting over the top. Ryers throw it away for the fourth time. Scruggs on the stop and stop to the bucket up and in. Well, you can't turn the ball over. Another live ball turnover. That gives Scruggs an opportunity at the top of the key. Again, you got to pick up these Xavier guards early. If not, they have the ability, Gus, hesitate and get to the basket. They're long and athletic and can finish. Cartwright looking for space. Drives baseline, pulls off the heel. Lit on the basket right now for Providence. Cartwright 0 for 4 inside Jones from McGarry and he'll pound it down. A little Mark Jackson shimmy shake. Per perfect for New York, but again, it's in transition. This Xavier team is sneaky fast, and one thing I love about J.P. McCure, he may not be shooting the ball with accuracy in the last couple of games, but he makes plays. In transition, he waited to Tyreek Jones, came down the middle, dropped it perfectly for the hammer slam. Tyreek Jones goes to the line, sophomore from Bloomfield, Connecticut. Vermont Academy had three against St. John's yesterday, adds the free throw. Xavier with a 23 to 10 lead. 19 5 run in the last eight minutes. Bullock. And he stops the bleeding. Oh, there you go. The Providence also has to figure out a way to get Alpha Diallo and Diallo involved in this game because he's such an integral part of their offense. I like the young guys that come in for Xavier. I like Scruggs. I like Marshall. Gooden is only a sophomore. The future is bright in Cincinnati. Mercure the fadeaway. Easy. In a good balance because you have veteran leadership with Mature on the court. But then you have these young guys that are energetic, athletic. You don't lose a lot when you go to the bench of your Xavier. Actually, you begin to make runs with this team that's in the that's in the game a, a lot of the times, guys. Well, a three. Najee Marshall with yet another rebound, his sixth in the first half. Scrubs, quick with the ball, top of the key, Jay Pure. I think Greg Popovich would like watching this team. <laughs> he would see a little bit of himself in it. Chris Mack has his boys moving and grooving. Xavier looking to dance as a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, but can they win the Big East tourney? Off to a great start in the semis. right now you got to guard with a purpose 28 12 Ed Cooley trying to inspire his team he said he they needed to come out and play with energy and enthusiasm and commitment 
Hasn't happened so far. Let's go to Lisa. Chris Mack told his team, don't even look at the scoreboard. We're not up by 16. We don't even have a lead. Remember, there are seniors over on the other side. There are seniors in that Providence huddle who are going to make a comeback. You have to be ready for that. Yes. All right, thank you very much, Diallo, who had a big game yesterday. 19 points off to a slow beginning. He hasn't scored yet. Here's Diallo, guarded by Gates, tries to take a baseline, now reverses, spins, pumps, off the window, and finally he's on the board. Well, and that was good defense. Kaiser Gates cut off the baseline, forced Diallo to spin to the middle, cut off the middle, but that time Diallo just was able to get up and use that athleticism a little bit and finish inside. But again, good defense by Kaiser, just better off. Blew it. Step back jumper. Rims off. Rebounded by Bullock. 28-14. Semi-finals. Lindsay three. Got it. In the huddle, the calmness of Coach Cooley, I think, fed to his team. But the intensity and in which way he talked sent the message. And on those two possessions, Providence responded out of the timeout. Quick 5-0 run for PC. Scruggs has played with great energy as Gates fires an air ball. Guys, earlier, Coach Mack talked about setting their defense in the paint. Well, their offense has been setting the tone early in this game. You're talking about 18 points to four points in the paint for Xavier. Now you can force Providence to look inside to double team. That opens it up. Here's Diallo on the baseline working Gates. Backs him down now. Jump up on the baseline. And air ball. Gates is another one of those Xavier players that has incredible length. He's 6'8. Cantor. This match. Across the lane and a foul. So Karim Cantor. The Turkish international will go to the line. Remember, his brother plays for the Knicks. Actually, he will not go to the line. A non-shooting foul. There's a jersey. He's in his brother's locker. I asked him before the game, you ever beat your brother in one-on-one? -on -one? He said, I beat him all the time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, you know what, though? He probably stretch him out and shoot jump shots on him. And there's that left hand hook on the baseline. He's got all those YMCA moves. That could drive you crazy. I know, man, because he's not going to beat you with athleticism, but he gets such good deep post position, and he's tricky and crafty once he gets the ball. He's not going to elevate over you, but he's soft, he has such a soft touch. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cartwright got the step and draws the foul. His first basket of the game. Well, when you can swing the ball, you force Xavier's defense to switch a little bit in regards to moving left to right. The gaps are going to open, and now you can exploit it, but... How about Cam Cannon right here? Soft touch to the baseline. Wonder if he got that from his brother. So Cartwright at the line, a 76% free throw shooter, all Big East honorable mention from Compton, California. Adds the free throw. They need him to play his best. He averages about 12 a game. Here's the pressure by Providence. Broken easily. Marshall. They swing it. Cantor. Now will back up on Bullock. Bullock trying to hold him off. Baseline turn and pure. But you, you see him eyeing Bullock and eyeing the middle of the court. Okay, you're going to come double team you now. I'm going to keep my dribble. And as soon as the double team went away, that's when he spent baseline. That's intelligence right there, guys. Six points for Cantor. Jackson. Square his shoulders, gets his own rebound, dumps it down. Bullock will lay it in. You see Bullock, he hesitated a little bit. He had the layup right away. But how about the hustle that time to keep the ball alive by, alive by Isaiah Jackson? 32-22. Cantor again. Why, why not, guys? Go this is fun. Yes. And this time he's fouled. You talk about experience when post players come into college, they're not comfortable with a double team. This time he's just eyeing the middle. Okay, now you come down. I'm gonna maintain my dribble. As soon as you go back, guess what? Now I'm going right back at you. I see the double team. 
baseline, but that's growth, that's maturity, more important, that's experience. It's almost unfair. He told me before the game that he had a chance to work out with his brother this summer, and one of the guys he worked out against was Carmelo Anthony. So don't think that he didn't learn some tricky trickies. Footwork, how to use your body on the post, but how to get open, and then get, I think the important part for a post player is getting the position that you want on the court where you feel comfortable, where you can go to work. And both free throws are good. Cantor has Xavier's last six points. Scruggs comes back in. And Makura, the senior, heads to the bench. 34 to 22. Watson wants it. Cantor's on his back. Cartwright a three. Boy, I love this Najee Marshall. Jimmy. He's got some ferocity in this game. Seven rebounds already. Well, he's grown so much in confidence. Early on, it was trying to figure it out in Diallo. Open, not able to knock it in, but he's added so much value. Especially to the second unit. Here's good quickly to the basket, hangs in the air, lost it. Providence picks it up, three on two now. Diallo with a hole, and he's fouled. 3.39 to play first half. Providence trying to fight their way back into this game. Xavier with a 34 to 22 lead. This is the Big East Tournament. The semifinal, Xavier Providence from the Mecca. Right now, Providence trying to be a tough out, down 34 to 22. Diallo and Cartwright, two for 11 in this game. And how about the freshman, Scruggs? He's got 10 points, he's four for four, his career high is 13. Well, what you can do if you're this Providence team is that you allow yourself to get these 10-2, 12-2 runs. That, that's so tough to come back from, because the Xavier team can just pound you. Their best offense, Gus, is when they can attack early, Move the ball side to side and then go. All right, Alpha Diallo makes the first. Let's go and take a look at three things you need to know about the Alpha Dog. His favorite music. What? What? Country music? His favorite historical leader, Frederick Douglass. Like that. You should know I get buckets. Well, they're going to need plenty of more buckets to beat the Xavier team. He has it in him. The country music. Yeah, and he's from New York. I know, bro. I listen to all music, so I get it, but I'm not going to say it's my favorite, but... Hank Williams Hank Jr., Williams, yeah. Hank Williams, Johnny Cash. Yeah, Johnny Cash, all black, baby. Charlie Pride. <laughs> Inside, Blewett Hill, and he's fouled hard by Watson. But Blewett knew the contact was going to come. In his peripheral vision, he saw Watson on the back line right here. He sees it, okay? So he's preparing for the contact right there. Mm, straight up and down. If Watson could have just been a little bit more vertical. It may not have been a foul. Blew it. First one good. I'll tell you what, I'm still having a problem with this country music thing with Diablo. What's that about? I think he was just kidding around. He had to be just kidding around. You just have to ask him to name his favorite artist. Come on. I think when they asked him, he filled it out, so unless he was <laughs> we gotta ask him, like, okay, give me your top five all time. Yeah, country something song. like that. That's what we gotta ask him. 316 to play. First half, 36 23. Baseline, Watson, jump hook. And a foul on the floor on O'Mara. I like this kid, Watson, his size, his strength, his versatility. He's very fluid. Be a 6'10 guy. Yeah, but he wants to get better. Coach Cooley talked about the work ethic. Him learning and understanding that he has to go hard all the time in practice, how it prepares him to become an ultimately a better player. Looks like he's in good shape, too. Oh, Diallo, yeah. the kick, Jackson. Cartwright curling, lobs it, Watson, nice catch, goes up and pounds it down. You see the offense? The ball moved, they swung it, Cartwright got in the lane and threw it up to Watson. And that athletic ability, one hand to go up and finish. 
Haji Marshall keeps his dribble alive, gets to the hole, can't finish, and Mara with the offensive rebound. Blew it. Good Makura O'Mara. And Marshall on the court for the X-Men. Blew it down low. O'Mara, great position. Blocked by Watson, though. Now Cartwright to Bullock for three. Long rebound. Bullock picks it up. Can't hold on. Makura, three on two. Makura to the basket. Baseline. Good. Beautifully done by J.P. Makura. And how about Makura? He goes to Blewett's side, attracts the defense, knowing that Quentin Gooden is on his left side, baits to defense, and makes the play. Gooden with six points. 38 25, 150 to play in the first half. Diallo. Backs up on good and uses his strength and a foul. A little hustle right here. Get your knees dirty, get on the ground and watch JP. Watch him go towards Trayvon's side. Right there. That's Drew Cartwright, Gus. Easy pass and coaches work on three on two fast break all the time and this was ran to perfection. Meanwhile, Makura picks up his second foul. Diallo starting to become more aggressive. Country music fan wants to make sure that by the end of this one, there will not be a tear in his beer. As he gets the first one to go. Scruggs. Back in. Now Malik White replaces Bullock. Second free throw good for Diallo. That's in his last minute and 30 seconds. Can Providence lock in? Get a couple stops back to back to allow himself to cut to this lead and get this under 10 before halftime. Tyreek Jones back in with Scrubs. Blew it. Trying to create step back force air ball. Cart right the other way. Baseline. Diallo fouled and will go to the line as Jones grabbed him. Well, that's the stop you needed, and now Cartwright able to be tricky in transition, and Diallo with the smart pump fake got Jones in the air, but how about Paul Strug, the freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana, showing his complete package. He's long, he's athletic. More important, Gus, he's competent. He feels that he can contribute and add in so many different aspects of the game. Paul Scruggs, three years at Southport High School in Indy, then he transferred to California Prep School to play along childhood friend Duke's Gary Trent Jr. Now Cantor back in. Jones on the bench. Diallo with six points. He's four for five from the free throw line. There's Paul. Because as you know, that's one way you can get yourself involved in the game. Let's get yourself to the free throw line, see the ball go in. Seven points for Alpha Diallo. Here comes Scruggs. Under a minute to go in the first half. Eighteen to shoot. Trying to get a mismatch inside to Canna. Luke White. With the switch back. Scrubs with eight to shoot. He'll take a three, double clutch, and fouled behind the three point line. Wow, Cartwright got him. Coach Cooley said he didn't touch him. Let's take a look right here when he goes up and double pumps. That's a tough one. Yeah, didn't look like he touched it. It at didn't all. look like it. See if we see it from a different angle, like right here. Well, I, oh, no. he, he missed that one. I think the double pump is what caused the official to look at it as it was a foul, but he, he didn't touch it. He didn't hit him. 
Scruggs with 12. Jones back in. Cantor heads to the bench. Ed Cooley has an argument. That's a tough call because you think you missed that shot. The lead is already under 10. And all three free throws good. 13 points for Scruggs. Ties a career high. And he look at his line. Four for four from the field. Two for two from the three-point line. Three for three from the free throw line. Perfect. Cartwright. Hang it. Ripped down by Scruggs. Now he has a rebound. Shot clock turned off. Game clock at 23. And a timeout called by Chris Mack. 20.9 to go. Xavier on top, 41 to 29. There's a lot of great, interesting nuggets about going to the Big East Tournament. When you're getting off the train and you go up the stairs, you kind of got this emotional feeling like we're here. We've arrived in New York. You go up the elevator. You see it's dirty in the elevator. Then you go into the game. Those images will never go away because there's no greater place to play a national tournament than Madison Square Garden. This taste of the Big East Tournament is sponsored by Guinness. Here's to us all. 41 to 29. Xavier dominating. What a difference a day makes for Paul Scruggs. Thursday he was scoreless. 0 for 3 from the field against St. John's. Tonight he ties a career high in the first half with perfect shooting. Well it must be because you just got the note from Lisa Barrington that uh, it's Paul's birthday. So happy birthday young fella. Paul Scruggs. How about that? Putting in work on his birthday. 20.9 to go. Good. We'll take his time. As they spread the floor. Good. Really good off the dribble, especially going right. It's that way. The swing at Cantor, the runner off the glass and in. And that's the end of the first half, and it was a big one for the Musketeers. Ten points for Cantor, 13 for Scruggs on his birthday. And the Musketeers lead it 43 to 29 at the break. A little pick and roll in the middle. Cam Cantor recognizing shot clock going down, going left, runner off the glass. It's a simple play, Gus, but when you can isolate your post player, you have confidence that he can put it on the deck. It's a great play to have in your pocket. Let's go to Lisa. I want to start by asking about your start. You were up by 16 in the first 12 minutes. What was the biggest key during that stretch? Well, I thought we came out with a lot of energy. Obviously, we took really good care of the ball, and, um, you know, we, we made some shots. So we got to continue to do that in the second half. Paul Scruggs on his birthday is already having a career high day. How much did you see that coming? He's played really aggressive. He's done a really good job. And, you know, the only, the only difficulties for us has been keeping them out of transition. If we've done that, they might have been closer to 17, 18 points. But, um, you know, they're going to push it. They got seniors. Uh, we got to do the do job in the second half. All right. Thank you. Thank Gus? You. Thank you, Lisa. That's the end of the first half with the score. Xavier 43, Providence 29. Rob Stone, Donnie Marshall, and Seton Hall coach Kevin Willard will be back with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Halftime report right after this. The city, the Big East Tournament semifinal. Xavier with an excellent first half, 43 to 29. Gus Johnson along with Jimmy Jackson. And Jimmy, when you watch Xavier play, it's almost as if Chris Mack has been able to force these kids to think with the same brain. Everything is just so fluid. And that's difficult to do, especially when you have young players. But it's tournament time, so you expect the unexpected. And guys just step up. And how about the birthday boy today, Paul Scruggs, the freshman. Four for four from the field. Two for two from behind the three-point line. Three for three from the free throw line. 13 points and no turnovers. A big reason why Xavier's up big. And Cam Cantor all year surprising everyone with his depth of post moves, the soft touch inside, the ability to score. All right, let's take a look at the Jeep first half stats. Jimmy, what jumps out at you? Well, the great defense holding the priors at 33% field goal shooting, but right here, 22 points in the paint, 18 points off the bench right there. Reason why Xavier's up big. 
Let's go to Lisa. And Cooley told me, hey, if Blewett and Makura had a combined seven points, I would think that we were in good shape. I didn't think we were strong with the basketball in the first half. He switched the things up, guys. Freshman Makai Ashton Langford getting the start for Providence. He hasn't played yet in this game. He's going smaller to start the second half, guys. Right. You're absolutely right, and he'll guard Gooden to start the second half. So Makura, Cantor, Gooden, Blewett, and Najee Marshall. Here's Gooden down the lane, the kick, Makura wide open, high, arcing jump shot, rims off, knocked out of bounds, and we'll head the other way. Well, Langford in the lineup gives you length, but it also gives you another push. He's not going to knock down deep shots as much, but he's going to be able to push and get some athleticism out there on the front, I mean, in the backcourt for the Friars. Ashton Langford, freshman from Worcester, Mass. But originally, he committed to Connecticut. Bullock a fade three, in and out. Blew it. And that one knocked out of bounds by Bullock. Yeah, and by going small, now you got Rodney Bullock guarding Cam Cantor inside. So the job for Bullock is to meet Cantor early, push him up a little bit now, crowd his space, and get him out of his comfort zone. Makira on Cartwright. Across the lane, the easy layup. Four points for J.P. Makura. That's another mismatch that Xavier can exploit. And Makura can get on the post. Gets a smaller cut right. Very similar to Villanova. Xavier can beat you from almost every position. Bullock. And good. Rodney Bullock with 11. Here's some pressure by the Friars. Broken easily. Good into the hole. Deals it off. Cantor, easy layup. A classic way to break the press. You pass over it, and then once you have a chance to have a three on two on the back side, you make the correct play. Diallo knocked out of his hands. Good health defense by Gooden. Ashton Langford driving to the basket, no. Rebounded Lindsay, double pump off the glass, and he'll get the roll. Jaden Lindsay with eight. Yeah, if they're gonna press two, Providence, you gotta be a little bit more active with your hands. You can't force or allow those passes, straight line passes, Gus. Xavier can take advantage of it and exploit you and get right to the basket. Good. Kicks it out, Makura behind the back, out of bounds, and he throws it away. But breaking the press, and I talked about it, excellent job getting to the middle, the pass, and now once you get inside the lane, now you just make a play. You got choices right here if you're good, and he made the correct one underneath. Only the third turnover for Xavier. Remember yesterday they had a season-low seven against St. John's. Just two points off those turnovers. And that was the strength of the Red Storm, forcing turnovers and coming up with steals. Lindsey. Now Makura. Diagonal pass. Behind the back. Blew it deep. Xavier playing with it. And ease, Jim. Well, they are, but they're in a comfort zone right now. And again, they're able just to operate their offense with very little resistance coming from the Friars. Jalen Lindsay drives on the baseline. Cut off by Gooden and stolen away by Makura. Marshall ahead of the field. Makura has his pocket pick. Diallo will get an easy one. Nine points for Alpha Diallo. And two turnovers that time by Xavier. One and a half court and one off the secondary break. Gooden. Bottle up on the sideline, he picks it up. Now Cantor wants it. Here comes a double. Blew it. And foul. They go back, Providence being active here. Bad pass, but the hustle was still there. As for Langford able to get a piece and up ahead, an easy two for Diallo. But that's the kind of pressure that you have to have, and more importantly, just the activity to be able to create some turnovers. That's the third foul on Jalen Lindsey. So Trey Blewett at the line. Average 19 a game this season, sixth in the Big East. 
six rebounds and three assists. As O'Mara comes in. Trey Blewett just putting up gaudy numbers. 43% from the three-point line this season. That's second in the conference. 85% free throw shooter. Sixth in the conference. Unanimous all Big East first team as usual. And could have easily been. I mean, the conversation could go either way. Whether, you know, for player of the year. I know Jalen Brunson got it, but Trayvon was right there on his heels for that award as well. Seven points for Blewett. Cartwright, the runner inside, way short. Cartwright, one for eight. Blewett, a three. Procura kept it alive. Out of bounds. And we'll stay on this end. 15.55 to play in the second half. Right now, Xavier walking the park. 49 to 35 lead. Fifteen fifty-five to play. Second half, Xavier with the basketball. As Blewett prepares to throw it in bounds. Good. Makura inside O'Mara. He sealed. Can't lay it up and in. What, what a beautiful play out of the timeout underneath out of bounds. Makura just not able. He had position. Couldn't finish. Willett steps into a three. Providence unable to come up with timely baskets in this game. O'Mara. Guarded by Nate Watson across the lane. Jump hook. Najee Marshall with the rebound. And Akira knocks down the three. And once again, it was Marshall coming from the weak side to be able to keep the possession alive with the offensive rebound. And JP. Scram the shoulders. Largest lead of the game right now for the Musketeers. Cartwright, one of eight from the field. Diallo guarded by Marshall. And McCure tries to pick his pocket. Knocked out of bounds. Now, about to be honest with you, Coach Cooley, they need a little bit more to Kyron Cartwright. You look at his production, this team is at a different level when he can knock down shots, but he plays with energy. He probes the defense. He's making plays right now, not being able to be as effective as the Friars need him to be. Cartwright had 13 against Creighton yesterday. Inside Diallo, oh, great, great hands, and he'll lay it in. Wow, great catch in traffic that time by Diallo. And how about not dragging his pivot foot, keeping balance and finishing. 11 points for Alpha Diallo. Scrubs on his 20th birthday. Blue. It. And a steal. Bullet. Almost threw it away. Ashton Langford to the basket. Lefty up and in. First bucket of the game. For Ashton Langford. 52-39. Well. Get to the basket, excellent catch, hands bobble, but you know what? Still able to finish with Diallo. And that's in traffic right there, Gus. How about Joy? Hey, do me a favor. Look at me. Do what I'm doing Scrubs feeds the post. O'Mara. Keeps it. Takes Watson. Rebounded. Ashton Langford. And he'll take a three. In and out. Batted around. Oh, and a big foul inside as Nate Watson just thrown to the ground. Because if, if Nate Watson here couldn't get the ball, control it, but he tipped it, was able to tip it to himself. And Scruggs right there on the grab. Oh, that's Trayvon blew it. Diallo, guarded by Gates. Good. Ashton Langford with the elbow jump shot. 
52 to 41. This kid has made a difference since coming into the game. 6 0 run for Providence. KYG, know your game. Missed a three point shot early, but he trailed right at the free throw line where he's real comfortable shooting that pull up jump shot. And a steal by Bullock. He's got Cartwright. Three on one. Cartwright, no look. Diallo to the hole. Counted on the foul. 8 0 run for Providence. Gus, it's amazing what you can do when you lock in and play defense. You create a live ball turnover. You get it out to your playmaker. Bullock in the middle of the action. The look away, a la Magic Johnson. Hi, Frazier in the garden. Running the break. And again, the defense can become your best offense. Providence making a run. Diallo at the free throw line. He's five of six. 52-43. Can Providence continue to get stops? Tyreek Jones now, guarded by Watson, puts it on the deck, has it knocked out of his hands. And a timeout called, or they're going to call jump ball, they get the timeout. Ed Cooley trying to will his team back into this game. The semifinals of the Big East Tournament. The winner to head to the championship to play for this. Out of New York City, 52 to 43. Xavier leading Providence. And look who's in the house, folks. Be sure to catch First Things First weekdays at 6.30 a.m. Eastern with Chris Carter, Nick Wright, and Jenna Wolf. There are the two guys. The Hall of Famer. Ohio State University. That's baby. right. One of the great receivers in the history of the National Football League. Well, how about the freshman Aston Michael? Scoreless against Creighton the other night, but making his presence felt off the bench, active on the defensive end, able to knock down. Nice little curl jump shot, two for four, four points, one assist. And Makai's best game since early December was against Xavier on February 28th. He had 11 points, three rebounds, and three assists. Right now, nice numbers for Makai. And the combination of Diallo and Ashton Lankford have combined for an 8-0 run to make it a 52-43 game. Trey blew it on an off night so far. He's one of eight, seven points. Inside stretch, lost to that five. And that play was usually the, rever the reverse, guys. Blew it would set that pick on Scruggs and then slip. But this time Scruggs read it correctly and got down the lane. Scruggs with 13 points, his fourth double figure game this season. Most recently, he had 11 against DePaul last Saturday. Now he is set, as Blewett heads out, a new career high. The freshman from Indianapolis on his 20th birthday. Well, Gustin, is that kind of the performance? That if Trayvon Blewett struggles a little bit, it doesn't impact and hurt the team as much because you have multiple guys that can put buckets in at a high clip for the Xavier team. Now Cartwright wraps it around Watson and he's fouled. Nate Watson will go to the free throw line where he's a 70% free throw shooter on the season. And Watson giving Ed Cooley a very happy birthday present. He announced that he was going to attend Providence on Ed Cooley's birthday. Get in good with the head coach, baby. Hey, baby, hey, hey. Second free throw good. Big man can shoot free throws. Beautiful touch, man. I mean, Body is still filling out. You see, he has a soft touch from the free throw line. Makura. Scrubs. Makura, quick release three. Way short. Ashton Lankford with the rebound. Here come the Friars on the fast break. Xavier gets back. Cartwright and a whistle and foul. Looks like Najee Marshall got caught holding on his hip, and that's his second. 11:51 to go. 
Providence still fighting down 54 45. Which of the New York Jets in attendance and also Bill Murray here to watch his son Luke, who's an assistant coach for Xavier. Obviously, Luke got his mother's looks <laughs> and his swag from his mother. Look at it. 54 45 Providence on a 10 2 run since being down by 17. But can they keep it up? Diallo calling for it inside. Ashton Langford has really contributed. Number one for Providence. He's got six points. Nine to shoot for Cartwright. As he turns the corner. Pulls up. Baseline and gets a roll. Oh, tough shot. He's two for nine with five. 54 47. Providence fans starting to get back into it. They travel well. Gates a three. Tapped around by Bullock. Ashton Langford. Hard push to the home. Loose. Watson dives. Gets it to his teammate Cartwright. Somebody's open. Bullock open on the weak side. Nobody can see him. And a five. Tough shot on the baseline. This is really good defense by Strauss that time. Better old, but how about the zone defense paying huge dividends for Providence? You see Ashton Langford going to the basket. Coach Cooley loving it right now. Feels the charge. Fifty-four forty-seven. Coach Mack told our Lisa Byington that he knew Providence would make a run. They've got seniors, so be ready for it. Well, here it is. Cartwright, a basket here. And the Providence fans will have something to celebrate. Cartwright for three. Off the back rim. That would have been a big shot. And the right play, inside out combination. Cartwright just not able to knock again. Now, Providence again, Gus back in that zone defense. Najee Marshall, a 14 footer, and it's good. In the zone defense, once your arms go down, you allow the ball to get into the teeth of the defense, and now you can either have the shot or make a play. Najee Marshall chose to knock it in. Najee Marshall, four points, nine rebounds in this game. Cartwright, tight ropes the sideline. Ashton Langford, who started the second half, has played well. Cartwright off the ball. Again, the baseline fade and hits. Tyron Cartwright starting to heat up now. He has seven. Providence back in the zone. What kind of zone is this? It's, it's almost like a 2 3 zone, but again, once the ball goes to the top in the wings, you got to push the other player out. You can't get that open right there. Nice love. Marshall dumps it down to Cantor for the layup and the foul. Again, attacking the zone. Picture perfect. You swing the basketball, you find the gap, you make plays inside, and the patience of Xavier on the last two possessions got them baskets. And if it works once, it might work twice. And Cartwright, a la Michael, Michael Jordan, right there a little bit on the baseline. So, Karen Cantor at the line. I tell you, this man is crafty. He's six of seven from the field, 14 points. All that tricky stuff inside. But you notice with championship teams, you always have a player or two that exceeds expectations. You, you know what they can give you a little bit. And Karen Cantor has done that all season. Transferred from Green Bay after three seasons. Well, look. Cartwright driving, spinning, hanging, and winning. Nine points for the young man from Compton, California. 59 51. 
Blew it back in. Cantor now. Probing. Baseline. Long shot. Short. Well defended. Providence could get even closer right here. Here's Cartwright to the hole. Rejected by McCure out of bounds. But two great defensive plays. On the other hand, it was Bullock, but now J.P. McCure not giving up on the play. You know, yesterday's game, McCure makes so many plays off the ball, whether it's steals, blocks. Now Watson wow. muscled it up. Wow. I like that a bounce play. It was too easy. It was right over the top to Watson, right in the middle of the lane. And the Providence bench starting to bubble now. Good. Inside, Cantor. Knocked out of his hands, taken away, and a reach and foul off Cantor. 59-53. Not a, not a lot of operation and space. Isaiah Jackson right there able to, to turn, swipe in. Cantor commits the foul at the end. This is a great defense by Providence. Cut right. Guarded by Good. Trying to shake it. Inside. And there for Watson. A 20 to 7 run from Providence after being down by 17, and here come the crowd. Look. And a reach in on Diallo. Well, Chris Mack said this team is going to make a run. They have seniors, but they got an outstanding freshman that can flat out ball out, Gus. Able to get it in. Friars making a run. Chris Mack understanding the opportunity right now. It's slipping away. Fifty-nine, fifty-five. Xavier after being up by 17. Seeing that lead cut into by Providence. The game reset is sponsored by SoFi. Rethinking personal finance. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Friars with four team fouls, six team fouls for the Musketeers. And here's the foul trouble. Lindsay with three, five players with two for Xavier. Let's go inside the huddle with Coach Chris Mack of Xavier. Down to getting stops at that end. All right? Quit playing like we're glazed over. We got to lead, man. You got to play with some confidence. We got to be the tougher team down there. Keep them out of the lane, not keep, let them get second shots. Cartwright looked you off on the ball screen, right? Box coverage, man. He, I don't care if he's out here. He's going to look there and throw late. You got to be that free safety. Don't let him. Don't let him destroy you with your eye, with his eyes. Get it done. I mean, you talked about the glazed look. Listen, this team has been there before. The teams are going to make runs. Go right back at him. Settle in, but also keep your eye on the body of Cartwright, not the eyes. He can fool you. Here's Lisa Byington. Oh, it was all smiles in the Providence huddle. Ed Cooley looking at his team and saying, hey, you got to enjoy the moment. We are right where we want to be. And a quick injury update on Xavier's Tyreek Jones. I'm told that he's just nursing that right elbow, but he is still available if needed, Gus. Okay, thank you, Lisa. 7.30 to play. 59-55. Backdoor McCure with a good catch to keep him from going out of bounds. Three to shoot. Marshall. And it's a shot clock violation. Another good defensive stand by Providence. But almost got away. They got away with Mature slipping back door. The pass just led him a little bit too much underneath the basket. But the recovery by Providence. Again, another stop, another chance offensively to cut this lead. Here's Cartwright. Watson, he's been big. Backs up, lost it, but knocked out of bounds. It goes off of Gooden's shoot. Yeah, but Kyle Wright's been big. Tell me, when he plays this aggressive, guys, he's tough to stop because he's crafty. He can knock down jump shots. Defensively, he gets into you. And as a leader of his team, when he has energy, the remaining guys on the court play with more energy as well. He's the catalyst. Diallo. Inside, Watson with position. Oh, Cantor goes up and knocks it in. Wow. And just like that, 
Providence within two after being down by 17. Watson with 12. He had four at halftime. Scruggs on his 20th birthday. Blew it. Cantor for three. Evans. Look at him step out, knock down a big time jump shot. I mean, but what it is to have a pressure release forward that can step out, pull the defense, and then knock down deep three point shots. Cantor with 18. 62 57. Bullock, 20 footer. Got it. Rodney Bullock with 13, 62, 59. Scruggs, the freshman, seeing big minutes down the stretch. Tough night for Blewett. He's one for eight. Blewett driving, stepping back, 16, no. And a rebound to Jackson. Cartwright tried to thread the needle and it's kicked. Let's go back to that previous play, letting the big dog eat inside. Nate Watson, beautiful footwork, soft touch inside. But you know what? Cam Cantor said, you know what? You're two, my three. Take that. Diallo off the glass and looks like an offensive foul. Third on Diallo. How about Jones coming in, getting set, fresh off the bench. Takes a charge. 62-59. 524 to play in the second half. This is the semifinal. The winner to advance to the championship game. Backdoor Makira reverse layup good. J.P. Makura with a great cut. He has nine points. Great cut, great pass. Poor defense that time by Providence. Cartwright curling. He's been good on the baseline. Watson up, in and out. You guys, keep your eye right here on this curl. McCure coming off this curl with Trayvon Blewett. Didn't switch. That was an easy pass inside to Cantor. From Cantor to McCure. That's just a well drawn up play. Nate Watson, two for two from the line. Guess you know about the feel of the game that I liked about Watson on that last play. He recognized he had a double team. It was a small, I mean, a single coverage on a smaller guy. The double team was going to come. He went quick. Second free throw, good. Four point game. Under five to go. 13 for Nate Watson. Both teams, two timeouts left. Makura. Scrubs looking inside, deflected. Jackson got to hand on the foot on the basketball with 12 to shoot. And communication right now for Providence is going to be premium because there'll be so many cuts, curls, the switching. You have to talk loud, you've got to talk early. Cantor. Cut off by Bullock. Leads in. That's short. Nate Watson goes up high with a rebound. Here's Cartwright. Quick dribble to the bucket. Oh! Compton. Straight out of. Two point game. 64 62. The winner of this game advances to the Big East Tournament Championship. Xavier's led by as many as 17. Cantor baseline. Marshall reverse. Rims up. Gets it back. Too strong. Providence can tie it with the two right here. Cross court. Phillip across the lane. The team drop. And a level. The Friars have climbed the mountain. 
64 up. Time out, Xavier. Wow, the exchange right now going on with Providence in transition. Carbright representing Compton, California. Get up and get it done, young fella. Unbelievable run right here by Providence. They have enough gas in the tank. Cartwright, a senior. Coach Cooley just inspiring his guys. We've got a 64-64 game in the Big East semifinal. Xavier's second half lead has evaporated. We're tied at 64s. And when this one is in the books, the winning head coach will join us live on the set. Plus, our coach of the night, Kevin Willard, will tell you how Butler might be able to pull off another upset of Villanova and a slew of highlights, including a great buzzer beater. Guys, we'll see you after the game. All right, Rob, thank you very much. Here's the game reset. Friars with two timeouts. Musketeers with one five team fouls against Providence seven against Xavier Arrow in the favor of the Friars and as you take a look at the foul trouble Lindsay and Diallo with three scrubs with three but Nate Watson has been Herculean. Well, coming out of halftime, we talked about unexpected performances. It was on the Xavier side. How about Nate Watson just stepping up big time? How about the confidence from the coaching staff and the players to get him the basketball deep? And when he's contributing and performing, everybody has confidence, a different element and dimension to his Providence offense. You always wonder how a freshman will respond in a big game, especially in the Big East tournament. Nate Watson has been brilliant. With 15.08 to go, the score was 52 to 35. 3.30 to go. 64 up. At the guard. Scrubs. Marshall, two freshmen. Marshall driving. Leading oh. now. Diallo pulls it down. Providence with a chance to take the lead. Cartwright. Last time Providence led this game, the score was 5 to 4. Watson calling for it. Jackson down the lane. And way off the mark. I think Trayvon Blue hit him on the arm a little bit. Got away with it. Scrubs the runner in traffic off the heel. Jackson on the other end with a rebound. 2.44 to go. 64-64. Cartwright, the senior, guarded by Scrubs, the freshman. Cartwright, eight to shoot, drives baseline, stops, fades, no good. Trey Blewett with the rebound. Oh, so close that time, Cartwright got to the baseline. Scruggs, Mercura, Blewett, Cantor, Marshall. Big East regular season champs. Blewett, turns, and five. I, I think it may have been at the end. Diallo's in perfect position. Let's see if he comes down. Now that's all ball. And that is the fourth foul on Diallo. Trey Blewett at the line. 85% free throw shooter. He's five for five at the stripe. Good, back in, Makura hits the bench. Tyreek Jones checks in. He replaces Cantor. And a timeout call by Providence. 157 to go, 65-64, Xavier. A look at the bracket here in the 2018 Big East Tournament. Xavier Providence in one versus five. The winner advances to the championship to take on the winner of our next game between Villanova and Butler. One point game.
65-64, Trey Blewett with one more free throw coming. Down the stretch of this game, you know, Trayvon Blewett has struggled with a shot, but I guarantee you Chris Mack is going to put the ball in his hands if he's able to make plays like this, get the benefit of the doubt, get to the free throw line. Second one, good. 66-64, Xavier. As Cartwright walks it up the floor with Bullock, Watson, Diallo, and Jackson. Diallo playing with four fouls. Cartwright straight away! Goodman strokes in the backcourt. Good down the lane with the left hand and kick Scruggs. Drives. Offensive foul. What a closeout to get under control by Cartwright. That's Scruggs, four foul. But watch, watch the closeout. You want to picture perfect, you get your body ready, force him to the baseline and get inside in the Providence bench. That's what I'm talking about, partner. 113 to go. Providence has been down by as many as 17. Cartwright off the ball, guarded by Scrubs. Top of the arc, Bullet to the hole. Rejected, and he's fouled. No isolation play on the elbow. Najee Marshall really doesn't commit. Bullock able to split and get inside and right on the down right there is where the foul is called. Bullock, first trip to the line tonight. He's a 73% shooter. 66-65. Subs, McCure coming in with Cantor. Offensive substitutions for Chris Mack. Lindsey in for Providence. Bullock trying to equalize. And we're level. 66-66. Under a minute to go in the Big East semifinal. Good. They rise to their feet here at the Mecca of basketball. Madison Square Garden. The winner to advance to the title. Good on the baseline. Kicks it out. McKerra. Save your ball. They'll get a new shot clock. Wow, I mean, wide open. What a play in the air by Good to get mature of that shot. But these are the kind of rebounds right now to win. You got to come up with your Providence. You just can't give this Xavier team another opportunity and a shot at the basket. So Blewett will serve as the inbound. 38.8 to go. O'Mara, power dribble, pulls up, and hits! Big shot! Yeah. 68-66, Savior. John O'Mara found his soft spot and knocks it down. What a game, 68-66, Xavier. The Musketeers led by as many as 17. Providence reeled them in. Xavier out of timeouts, Friars with one. And Providence has the arrow. You have to expect this man to get a chance to either level the game or take the lead with a three-pointer. Yep, and look for Providence to advance the ball quickly. And probably a little misdirection. Cartwright right off a of pick and roll or get Bullock on that right elbow. So he can go to his right hand strong to the basket and isolate him. Bullock, one for six from the three-point line. Here's Cartwright. 30 seconds. Cartwright turns. Kicks, Jackson 
for three. Loose. Makira with the rebound. To Marshall. Blew it inside. He missed it. 16 seconds to go. Cartwright down the lane. And he hits it. And they're going to call it on the floor. But he will shoot. In the NBA, yes, this is a continuation. The call is called on the floor, but my goodness, it's so close. 12.3 to go. Cartwright, one of one from the free throw line. First one good. 68-67. Second one good, and we're tied. 68-68. Xavier out of timeouts. Good. Ten seconds. Good. Seven seconds. Good. Four seconds. Drives. Good. Two seconds. McCaw rejected bullet, and we're heading to overtime. Wow. What a defensive play by Rodney Bullock. Gus, down the stretch of the game, it's been some heck of a defensive play. It's Makura right here. Great pass, but Bullock once again coming up big time on the defensive end of the court. Wow. Making game-winning plays. Blewett's missed layup opened up the opportunity for Providence, and great pass, great cut. Great defense. Ed Cooley. He'll take it. <laughs> Five more minutes. We still have a chance. Providence with back-to-back -back overtime games. And Coach Mack wanted a foul. Overtime is sponsored by Jeep. Grand Cherokee. Five minutes on the clock. 68 68. What a game. The Friars were down by 17. Friars. Two and one in overtime games this year. Xavier, two and oh. Xavier sends out Blewett, Jones, Good, Makura, Marshall, Cartwright, Watson, Bullock, Jackson, and Diallo for Providence. Watson and Jones will jump it up. And it's controlled by the Friars. Jimmy, at this point in the game, in the Big East Tournament semifinals, overtime, we'll find out who's in shape. Better believe it. It's been a hard-fought game, physical game. You can be tired after the game. Bullock, baseline, pull. Hold it. Najee Marshall with yet another rebound. He has 12. And I'd really love to see Bullock that time pump fake and try to get to the basket. That's been his strength, just in the second half. Blew it one for 11 in this game. Nine points. Wide open sets and hits. Still, even though he was one for 11, he had the confidence to take the shot. Okay, so if you're that good, you scored that many points. Confidence is one thing and not lacking. His teammates know it and he knows it. 70 to 68. Diallo has to stay aggressive. Jackson inside, Watson, and he's fouled. Nice pass by Isaiah Jackson. And we go back to that blue and play. Struggling, yes. Losing confidence, of course not. Diallo 
on the ground. A little stamp. Splash. Great move. Almost look a little bit like uh, my man James Hart. Against Wesley Johnson. That's right. Here's Watson. Mm. Oh, free throw good. Cantor now coming in. Tyreek Jones. 14 points for Nate Watson. Had a 20 point game this season against Creighton. Second free throw rims off. Xavier holding on to a one point lead. Game is tied at 68 at the end of regulation. These two teams split the season series. Each team winning at home. Good. Crosses over. And he's bumped and fouled. That's about the second time he worked the shot clock down defensively. Xavier being a little bit more aggressive getting to the basket and the foul is committed. And Gus, you talked about this Xavier team kind of like San Antonio, one thing they don't do is beat themselves. And you see down the stretch, and Xavier can mimic that. How about Xavier as a team? 15, 15 from the free throw line. Good shooting one and one. And he missed it. But Tyreek Jones gets the rebound and a new shot clock. Wow. See, and those are, the, again, game winning type plays. Can't give that up if you're Providence. Kaiser Gates in. Secura roaming that baseline. Blewett breaks to the ball, fires. Rims off. Isaiah Jackson with the rebound. Providence can take the lead on this trip. Cartwright. Jackson for three. A prick. That's not the shot right there. That you can get that shot anytime. I think you work it a little bit more. Jackson 0 for 5 from the field. Still shooting. Blew it. J.P. McCure now down the lane. Couldn't turn the corner. Wanted a foul. Here's Cartwright. You know that Nate Watson touching a little bit. The Diallo in the post. Pulls up. In and out. Oh, and back down. First lead for Providence since the score was 5-4. to 2.17 to go in overtime. Game is tied at 68 at the end of regulation. Good in the sophomore. Pulls up for three. Tipped around. And Diallo has it. And Ed Cooley wants things to slow down. Four down is the play. Come down four. Jackson. 12 to shoot. Bullock. Seven to shoot. Jackson. And he's stripped. Here's Blewett. 130 to go. Trey Blewett on the baseline. Across the lane. Down the lane. Off the window. In and out. Wow, the officials are letting it go. With some contact, but they're letting it go on both ends. 71 70 Providence. Time out, Friar. Back and forth, opportunities at the rim. Trayvon Blewett initiating the contact straight up and down. Not able to finish off the glass with his left hand. But Diallo, alpha, alpha male inside, able to get the soft touch and the roll for Providence. Seventy Providence, one fourteen to go in overtime. As you look at the reset, let's go to Lisa. 
Remember eight days ago, Ed Cooley, when Providence lost to Xavier, said in his post-game press conference, I'd be excited to play them again. He thought it was a missed opportunity. He thought Xavier was playing for everything in that game, playing for a share of the championship, playing for senior day. So he has motivated that for his team. And being good buddies with Chris Mack, you know what, Gus? He knew that would rub Chris Mack the right way. So master motivators here on both sides of the sideline, Gus. No doubt about it, Chris Mack actually called Ed Cooley after that game and said, what was that about? He said, hey, I want to play you again. Xavier winning that second game, 84 to 74 at Centos. Right now, his team, Chris Mack, was up by 17, trailing by one now. Tyron Cartwright, Jalen Lindsey in the game. To Diallo, guarded by Marshall, takes him down low, slips, kicks, seven to shoot, Cartwright, crosses over 16, but oh, he got it! He's eaten! 73 to 70, 50 seconds to go, and Chris Mack calls a timeout. Sometimes you just got to create your own opportunity. Cartwright squaring up, Strugs able to pull up for this jump shot. The momentum has been on the side of this Providence Friars team, and why not? Allow your senior, Compton, to finish the play. And Gus, the last five years, bro, this Providence team has been 45 and 16 in games decided by six points or less. Ed Cooley. Forty nine point four to go in overtime seventy three to seventy Providence the number one seed in this tournament the Xavier Musketeers here at Madison Square Garden on the ropes as you know as I know quick two you can get it with this lineup Xavier don't need a three unless you're wide open let's see if they go to Trey Blewett when it's all said and done. And a foul called against Providence. And that's the fourth on Lindsay. And that's a one and one opportunity now for Blewett. Well, watch the scrum right here. Smartly, Trayvon Blewett. Crafty senior right here. It's going to take the contact, act a little bit, get knocked down, and now get to the free throw line. Very heady by the senior. Najee Marshall back in for Cantor. Blew it six for six from the free throw line. One and one. Seventy three, seventy one. And he gets them both. 73-72, 10.8, differential on the shot clock. Jackson calls a timeout. And that was the final timeout for the Friars. Yesterday, Kyron Cartwright hit one of the biggest shots of his career. Another big win in this game. One point affair, 73 72. Both teams out of timeouts with 40.8 to go. A 10.8 differential between the game clock and the shot clock. So, Xavier does not have to foul. And Providence, first and foremost, get the ball in bounds cleanly. Get it in the Cartwright's hands. I'm sure what he's going to do is hold the ball a little bit, 
attack under 10 seconds on the shot clock to see if he can get himself in an isolation pick and roll or get to the basket, but the ball will be in his hands on this possession. The winner of this game takes on the winner of our next game, Butler Villanova. Those two teams, Butler and Villanova, also split the season series. Each team winning at home. So on to the floor for the Friars, Diallo, Bullock, Lindsey, Jackson, and Cartwright. I guess this Xavier team is really good at funneling you into traffic and then coming in with a little strip and being able to get the ball. They give it to Jackson. He finds Bullock in the corner. Now they back off. Cartwright guarded by Gooden. They'll jump him in the backcourt. He leaves his feet, finds Bullock in the front court. They want to get it to Cartwright. Bullock, 12 to shoot. Bullock down the lane and stolen, but taken back by Jackson with six to shoot. Jackson, left hand, oh no! Here comes McCura, 10 seconds. McCura down the lane. Offensive foul. With 7.7 to go. Now the question is, does Cartwright get set? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Jackson, the inbounder, 7.7 .7 remaining. And Ed Cooley quickly gets his guys together and draws up a play. Huge inbounds pass coming up. Well, keep in mind, Isaiah Jackson can't move. So he spotted on the baseline. So he doesn't have a lot of room to work with, especially on this side of the court. So the thing you don't want to do is get it deep in the corner where the out of bounds or the sideline could come into play. And if Xavier or when Xavier fouls, Providence will be shooting one and one. Seven point seven. What a job by Kyron Cartwright to come in and take that charge. It is. He stepped up. I mean, big time. He he knew his only advantage to stop in this play was to take a charge. Now, now keep in mind too, Gus. Providence, you have to come to the ball. Isaiah Jackson, you can't float the pass. You have to zip it in there. And if you can't get it in because you don't have a timeout, you got to throw that thing to the other end of the court. And hopefully somebody touches it and gets it. Because if they don't and it goes out of bounds, the ball comes right back underneath the basket down here for Xavier. Good point. So there's a lot of things going on right now. Wow. 7.7 7 seconds left without a timeout. For either team. Providence trailed this game by as many as 17. Managed to claw their way back into it. The game was tied at 68 at the end of regulation. Both teams coming back on the floor now. Isaiah Jackson looks like he'll throw it in bounds. Bullock, Diallo, Lindsey, and Cartwright on the court. So here we go, 7.7 .7 remaining. Diallo breaking to the ball. And McCura knocks it out of play. It's too soft. That pass is too soft, Gus. That pass can get picked off. McCura is really tricky with that. Seven point one to go. Jackson again. And Diallo gets it and is fouled quickly by Najee Marshall. Diallo five of seven from the free throw line this evening. Who shoot one and one. Al 
Mustafa Diallo. Young man from New York City. Playing at home. Big one's here. Mm. 74-72. Hey, Gus, it's very important. Your Providence, whoever catches the ball for Xavier, they have to have their back to their basket. On the opposite end, if you're Xavier, you want to catch it on the run and go. And he gets both. 5.7 to go. Xavier, no timeout. Down. 75 72. Blew it. Back to Gooden. Gooden looking. Can't take it up. Get it off the time. And that's it. The Providence Friars climb the mountain. After being down by 17, they come back and win it in overtime. 75 72. Ed Cooley's team. What a performance. And they head into the Big East Tournament Final to take on the winner of our next game between Villanova and Butler. And this play just took too long to, to get started, and Hanter was wide open, but that was after the, the game clock had went off. If you're gonna run that with that many multiple screens, the ball has to get up the court a lot quicker in order to get into the offense. How about the comeback? Gus, unbelievable down the stretch. Both teams played their hearts out. Big time contributions from Providence. Ed Cooley, his team becomes the second team in Big East tournament history to win back to back overtime games. Syracuse did it in 2009. Chris Mack. After such a great regular season, his team is heading home, and the Providence bench just explodes. The number one seed knocked out. So let's take a look at the bracket. Providence will advance, defeating Xavier 75 72 in overtime. They await the winner of Villanova and Butler. Let's go to Lisa Byington. Well, Kyron Cartwright, you guys were down 17 points. How did this comeback happen? Um, I think it's just the culture of our group that we built at Providence the last four years. And it says a lot of our guys. Um, we just got a fighter's mentality, and we're never going to quit. And it showed out there tonight. You know, Makai came out there. You know, I love what he did as a freshman. And Nate, those guys picked us up tonight. Those are, that's the reason we won tonight, those two guys. I would say you're part of the big reason too. You've got quite the clutch gene, a big bucket in the quarters to beat Creighton. You came through in all the clutch plays. What is it about winning time where you shine the most? Like I said earlier, it was those two guys. Without them, they opened the floor up for me tonight. And I was able to get some space after they came in and helped me. And I'm just so, honestly, I'm just proud of our guys. I'm glad I got to play in front of my parents my final senior year. And it's just divine providence. It's an incredible comeback. Thank you. Thank you. Rob. All right, Lisa. So the Friars off to their third Big East Tournament Championship game. They won it all in 1994 and in 2014. The subdued Ed Cooley joins us on set. Donnie Marshall, Kevin Willard here with you. And let's talk about Kyron Cartwright, coach. We just heard from him. He had that wonderful bucket to give you guys that three-point cushion in overtime. And then the charge. You saw J.P. Mikura coming down the lane, and you saw Kyron step in. What's going through your brain at this moment? You know, just make it a tough two. You know what I mean? Tough two. Uh, we were still up. I think we were up three. No, actually, we were up one. We still had time left. But Kyron has taken those charges for four years, and he's, he's done a really good job. Uh, his whole career taking those level of charges. Kevin, we probably had a couple against you that they probably called blocks, you know, when you beat us. But I'm just proud of the group, the resiliency of the group. 
coming back from a large deficit against a great team. What an atmosphere at MSG. I couldn't be more proud of our guys. I, I tell you what, I, I've, I've coached against you now 11 years, and your teams get better and better, and their toughness is unbelievable. What was the difference, though? What was the turning point in that second half in your mind? Our attitudes. I thought our attitudes um, and our sense of purpose. I told them in the locker room, we're at Madison Square Garden. We're on Fox. I got seniors. Sell out. Give it up. Everything on the floor, and man, did they deliver. What a, I'm so proud of our babies, Kevin. I'm so proud of our babies. Eddie, at what point in this game did you feel, or, or was there a point where you felt like, you know what, I think we can win this game? The crowd clearly was behind you. Your guys stepped up. There was a 16-point deficit and points in the paint in the first half. Second half, you guys won the paint by two. But what point did you feel we can win this game? When we started attacking the paint, I thought we could win once we started attacking the paint. We went small. I thought Makai gave us an unbelievable spark, Tremendous. gave us another ball handler, and drive the ball. And what do we got to lose? I said, what do we got to lose? We're playing against a number one seed. We're still trying to get in the tournament. For everybody who's thinking about that, I don't think we're on that bubble, baby. No, I don't think so anymore. I don't anymore. think we're on that bubble, baby. Uh, you, you, you kicked that bubble <laughs> out into the Hudson, my friend. Providence, the only program this year to defeat both Villanova and now Xavier twice. So you've had your share of locker room celebrations this year. We've seen some good ones. Uh, take a look at the monitor right now, my friend. Oh, look at my babies in there. Look at my babies in there. Absolutely. I can't wait to get back with them. They deserve this. We're going to sit here and watch this game. I'm, I'm so happy I'm speechless, man. So, so coach, what do you think they're, they have in store for you when you walk through that door? I hope I get a lot of hugs, man, because I love those kids, man. I do. I love them. I'm proud of them. I can't wait to get in there. Coach Cooley, we love having you on set. I you too, Coach you Willard. Hey, Larry, one day. One day, Larry. One day. <laughs> one day. I want to be like these guys except him. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Fox Thank Sports you. executive Larry Joe is getting Thank the shout out. Well done. Thank Coach you. Cooley, again, Chiron Cartwright steps in and delivers the charge. Jalen Brunson and Villanova's reaction. Well, if they win, they got Ed Cooley's Friars tomorrow night on Fox. Nova in action with Butler. We're going to talk that one next.